Welcome to Abundant Life. Today on the homestead, I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. We're going to plant some corn. You know, a uh, long time ago, years ago, I used to have about 20,000 square feet allocated for gardens. And I would only plant about 10,000 of that a year. I didn't, I didn't go that big, but about 10,000 a year I'd plant. And the other half I'd just let go to God and every year switch around plots and at the same time me and the wife we'd raise animals i'd hunt hunt for deer rabbit and also hunt mushrooms find some wild plants that we like to eat and uh, with all of that between between all that we would raise harvest or trade for about 80 percent of everything we ate Going out to uh, going out to eat was just a once in a while thing, and uh, rarely even had to go to the grocery store. But time time wounds all heals, and uh, I went down pretty hard. And uh, Mama got a job, and the garden got smaller and smaller. And about four years ago, I uh, was the last time I planted any kind of garden. And so this year. Caleb come to me and Gavi was he's the only one of the boys that had any real experience during that time of of, of having the gardens and everything and you know he, he he remembers what it was really like and he come to me this year and said dad I, I I want some sweet corn I want to plant some sweet corn I'm like heck yeah let's have some sweet corn it's been a while so as long as uh I teach him and he does a load of the work, and I do the work. I think we're going to have a nice sweet corn plot this year. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah. So before we get started out in the dirt, we're going to, uh, we're going to discuss the hows and whys of uh, planting our corn. Um, first thing, God, if you gra grab that uh, paper there, just in case you need it, I'm going to have you sit down and figure this out. As I tell you, what I want around my corn, I want a five foot perimeter of dirt. Something that I can run my tiller all the way around and have a barrier between the grass and the, the, the morning glories and everything that spreads by roots. I want to be able to keep that tilled the entire season. I want a five foot perimeter around it. So then each row of corn, each row of corn we do is going to be a foot wide. It's called a double row. Okay, and between each row, I want another five feet of space. Now, with five feet, I won't be able to run the tractor tiller through there, but uh, just over years of trying, I would do two feet, three feet. I went clear out to six feet between rows, and I've just, over the years, I always found out we got the best growing corn at five foot. So we're going to have five foot between each row. Five foot perimeter one foot wide row five foot between each row so you tell me how wide and how long this plot needs to be because this plot is bigger than the garden you know we had that fire out here and i had to run through and cut a fire line to keep it from spreading across our pasture and uh so i just tilled all of that this all all of that is not going to be our our corn plot you tell me how wide and how long of a plot we need to have four four rows of corn each 50 foot long. 29 by 50. 29 by what? 50. 29 by 50. Well, if our rows are 50 foot long, I still need that five foot perimeter. 20 by, 29 by 50. 29 by 60. Okay. We'll just call that 30 by 60. That works out pretty well because 30 by 60 is what the old garden plot was here. So, and actually once you get past that 30 foot, you start getting into the tougher dirt and the, the bigger stones. And so 30 by 60 sounds good. You think we can handle that this year? Four rows? We can do it. Okay, so what's going to happen... <clears throat> You know, we, I I, uh, I went ahead and tilled this up for us yesterday after uh, after me and Jamie did the uh, cultivating and subsoiling, and uh, got a pretty straight line down that going down there. I'm 
I'll have you eyeball it here in a second, see what you think. We're going to start down at that corner. We're going to measure out 60 foot, and we're going to put us a little post, and we're going to call that the corner of our field. We're going to measure up 60 foot, and we're going to put another post. We're going to call that the corner of our field. And we're going to take our cedar. Okay, Gabby, go over there, grab that cedar and that big metal ruler, and bring it right over here to this spot. Okay? This would be a good spot to set her up. Okay, Caleb, we got you got the cedar here. Stand it up. Okay, so I use this cedar not to plant seeds, and I'll tell you because I've never found a plate for it that is uh, consistent enough or puts the seeds where at the intervals that I want them. But we're going to use this cedar to uh, mark our rows, and we're going to actually plant our seed by hand. So, first thing we're going to do, Caleb, this piece right here, pop it, off, pop it off and lay it down. It just pops straight back, and you can lay it down this way so it's coming towards us. Okay. Now, yep, go, go ahead and pull that dowel out. We'll get to it in here in a second. I want you to take your ruler here, lay it out so the beginning of your ruler is right there, where it makes, now make sure it's the beginning of your marking. Okay, now you got a thumb screw on here. Loosen that thumb screw. And I'll hold your cedar steady here. Loosen that thumb screw. Now you're going to slide that back. Don't worry about that thing yet. Yep, that whole thing. Loosen that up. You may need to jiggle it and wiggle it to get it to slide. Don't take the thumb screw clean off. You just did, but that's okay. It's a learning experience, buddy. Wiggle and jiggle that thing, you'll get her to move down the shaft. There you go. Now you're going to slide that down to where that is sitting one foot away. Exactly one foot away from the little furrow that this thing's going to make. What do you mean a furrow? This, um, a groove in the ground where we're going to plant our seeds. What groove so bring, make? yeah, bring that back. Twelve. Bring that back to that twelve-inch mark. All right. Are you on the twelve inch or just you know close, close yes. enough? You're on twelve inch. Now tighten that thumb screw down as tight as you can. And actually, if you look on there, you can see. From back when I used to use this thing, I left myself a one foot mark. It's a little, yeah, that's about half an inch inside from where, from where you had it, but uh, yeah, we're good. That's, that's, that's close enough to good. Now what you're going to do, I made this dowel rod, right? And I took that dowel rod, I screwed a uh, screen door spring to the end of it. I measured out some holes for different distances, put a cotter pin through the holes. That hole, where it's at, gives you a four foot row. We're doing five foot. That cotter pin needs to be in that hole. And it's it's a tight fit, and I, I like it to be a tight fit, so get her pushed down through there until it snaps in place. You don't go all the way to the, that's, that's where you go with it, right there. You want it in that middle hump. Now push your dowel rod all the way in. Okay. Now what happens is we is we go down our row, and we'll lower we'll lower this right here before we before we take off. That's like a little plow blade. As we go down our row, it shows you where you mark the next row, and then we come back. We put that in while we're marking that next row, and it gives us the five foot for the beginning of our next row over. Okay. So, yeah. Go ahead and take that out. We're not going to use that quite yet. We still got to measure the field. Okay. Clear as mud. All right. Yeah, yeah. Clicked a couple times. So we're going to start at this corner because that's a pretty straight line. You agree? I mean, that's, right here. that's yeah. We're not all wobbling around and stuff. We're going to put a post at this corner. This is the. I did. I got the nine. Yeah, you rolled it backwards. Yep. Okay. 
So here is our first corner of our field. How far are we going that way? 50, 60. 60 feet. All right. Keep some kind of decent pressure on the wheel. Don't push down on it as you're going, but keep pressure on. Just walk forward. The center, that's where you start. So when you get to 60, the center of it will be the end of our field. Okay? So slowly walk. Make sure, make sure it's rolling. Make sure you're not lifting it up and it spins any on its own or we'll end up a little shorter than we wanted to be. But don't put too much pressure on her. It won't roll very well. And you don't have to do it right on the edge of the dirt. You can stand in the grass here. Yeah, as long as you know you're starting right here, you can stand, you know, you can stand over here where I am and start if you want. Just try to keep it keep it fairly straight. Not too much pressure, but not so little pressure that you go up over a piece of dirt and it spins the wheel further than it should. We go 61 to provide room for error. Uh, nah. We'd ra I'd rather us be just a little short than a little long because the back side of this also was never field and I want it to go back to grass and pasture because uh, <clears throat> it just makes it easier to turn the tractor around or when I'm pulling the trailer through there, I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll stop at 60. Got 60 right there? Yep. Okay. So, here's the first edge of our field. How far do we need before we start planting? 29, right? Now, how, how far do we need before we start planting? Where's our first row going to be off of this edge? Five feet. Five feet. Guess how we're going to mark that five feet? Post. Huh? Post. Well, we're going to mark it with posts as we do it, but guess how we're going to measure that five feet? Feeder. With the cedar, it's got that five that spring that hangs out five feet. So we're gonna go get the, the cedar, put the dowel rod in it. Um, we can actually start at this corner, buddy. We don't we don't have to go one certain direction because that that bar will flip to either side. Okay, drop your dowel rod down in there. And since we're running, we're running on this ground and we're not making a little furrow to plant our seeds in, mm -hmm. we're going to leave that blade up. But when we start actually doing our rows that we are going to plant, yep, just let that drop. When we start actually doing the rows we're going to plant, we're going to drop that down in so that it makes, makes that groove in the ground for where we're going to put our seeds. Now just walk straight along the edge of this grass and you're probably going to get stuck on that root. Yep. All right, get her straightened out here. Just keep the edge of that wheel along the edge of the grass.
All right, well, we got pretty much everything marked off. He, uh, he veered off on the last row. We're going to fix that with a hoe. So uh, we're going to stop, take a break, de-sweat a little bit, and uh, come back. And next thing we're going to do, we're actually going to run a hoe through all of these just to, because there's several places where you just, you wait. And, and when I do it too, it's the same thing where you step and you fill, fill that in. Anyway, so, yeah, we're just going to lightly drag a hoe through each of those lines and then we'll just let you remake the last two as close as you can to straight. You know where the beginning and end is, so as long as you don't follow the line you already made, you should be able to pull them together. The other the other three rows are dang near perfect. I mean, I measured them at both ends. You stayed straight, buddy. That was, that was good. That was good. I'm proud of you on that one. So, yeah, we're going to we're going to stop and break a little bit. Get some liquid in us and uh We'll come back and do the next step.